tell you a little bit about my brother so you can all appreciate what a remarkable man he was and how fortunate we all were to know him as a husband, father, grandfather, brother, and friend. Jack, sometimes referred to as Jackson by my mother, was the eldest of four children born to Air, Mary, and Ed Strasser of Collingswood, New Jersey. I came along some three and a half years later. Mark and followed in another three and a half years. And Pete, who died very suddenly at age 50, was the caboose about six years later. I remember well February 9, 1944, when my dad woke Jack and me in the middle of the night to tell us that we had a new baby sister. We thought, what's the big deal? And we went back to sleep. It was years later when we discovered how truly blessed we were to have such a wonderful sister. Although we went to Catholic schools, were taught by the good nuns, and were older boys, Jack and I didn't seem to remember that part of the Fifth Commandment that talked about fighting. In fact, even though I was smaller and usually got the worst end of it, we engaged in fisticuffs quite often. My mother would carry her sainthood with her directly from this life to the next. It was her to remark that she feared we would both end up in jail. <laughs> we lived just down a short alley from our grandmother and aunt. We had such fun running to their home on Christmas and Easter to see what special gifts awaited us there. Jack was a worker who had a variety of jobs at one time or another. He was a paper boy, cut lawns, and worked at a drugstore, a diaper laundry, a florist, a funeral home, and an acne food store. I believe Jack stayed in the Navy so long to show that he could hold a job. <laughs> Jack was very meticulous. When he had a date, he spent hours making sure that the appearance was impeccable, that all of his clothes matched and that his car was waxed, washed and waxed until it shone like the sun. He was also a real romantic type of guy. While attending St. Joseph's College in Philadelphia, he had a blind date with Ann Campo. Five and a half years later, he decided to propose to her. He wanted a unique, quiet setting for this bold action, one that Ann would not forget. And I can assure you that she had. <laughs> While driving down the busy street, he came to a stop sign, stopped the car, and handed her a ring. <laughs> now, how could she not remember that? <laughs> I'm sure the car was sparkling. <laughs> Our father had a great time with the clock. He acquired several, and on the hour and a half hour, our room was filled with the chiming of the clock. I'm not sure, other than in his Navy life, Jack fully understood that the purpose of a clock is to help you get someplace on time. <laughs> that rarely occurred for Jack. Mark remembered Jack promised practicing on his clarinet in the basement as he was a member of both the high school band and orchestra. She also recalled that Jack gave her his older car to use during her final year of college. A friend of Margie, who lived next door, remembers Jack as her favorite because he never teased her. I'm wondering where that leads me. <laughs> Anne was the most important person in Jack's life and she presented him with seven beautiful children, each of whom he loved in a very special way. Born throughout the United States where Navy duty took them and even in Ethiopia, together Jack and Anne nurtured and provided for them. I remember particularly when Jane, number six child, was born in Walter Reed Hospital. Fearing that the baby would arrive too early, Anne was hospitalized on October, 20, October 12th, while delivery occurred on November 22nd. We lived close by, but for a few weeks I was still in California aboard my ship. So Jack and my wife Barbara had nine children between them to care for, while Anne patiently was able to keep from giving premature birth. Upon my arrival to Virginia, I saw for myself the concern that Jack had for Anne and the baby's safety. All survived, thanks to family, friends, church, prayers, and neighbors' help. 
As the children grew, so did Jack's love and concern for them. Each child was so different, yet each reflected the strong Catholic values that were so much a part of Jack's and Anne's life. Jack was so relieved when their eldest, Mary Ellen, selected the Franciscan University of Steubenville as her college choice. Thus began a special relationship with Steubenville, as Susan, Matt, and John also graduated at a prestigious college. Stephanie chose her father's alma mater, St. Joseph's University of Philadelphia, and they, along with Joe Stillo, step-husband, cheered for the Hawks during basketball March Madness. In the same city, Jane graduated from her mom's alma mater, Immaculata University, where Jack drove great distances to attend her school, her soccer game. Eldest son, E.J., graduated from the U.S. Naval Academy after much discussion with his dad about a naval career. As the children started and then ended their college years, they in turn began their own family, and they thus far have presented Jack and Ann 13 grandchildren, each different, and yet so much the same as they assumed traits of their grandparents. Mary Helen recalls that when her husband-to-be John asked Jack permission to marry her, Jack replied, I will be honored the day you become my son. On the other hand, Susan recalls the inspection that prospective boyfriends went through before they could date one of Jack's daughters. The poor fellow had to appear at the Strasser home and answer a series of questions about background and ideas on certain subjects before the first date which would occur on another evening. <laughs> she also recalled he was interested in all their activities even after they were grown and living on their own. Jack loved to read stories to the grandchildren. Among his favorites was Drummer Hobbs, which Steph kids wouldn't let anyone else read because it was Grandpa's book. Jane remembers how Jack would tease her intense children by pretending he didn't know colors and saying something yellow was purple. One of their children told Jack he should go back to school and learn his colors. But even she knew her buttons colors better than he did. E.J., who resides in Vienna with his wife Elizabeth, recalls Jack's distaste for certain international foods which Anne often prepared. Now one night, Jack, Jack got a glass of milk dumped on his head when he criticized some foreign cuisine just a little too vigorously. <laughs> E.J. also recalled all of Jack's tools and how he learned from Jack how to do some maintenance work on his car. 